You know, Amber, I love being in the green room, although there's nothing green around us, right? But I love being in the green room because it's like where the magic really happens. Um, take a moment, if you will. It's just you and I and a few people who decide to eavesdrop on our conversation. So I don't have to read this bio and talk about how wonderful you are. They'll go <laughs> Google you or they'll find you. But take a moment and tell us uh, who is Amber and what is Amber up to these days? So much. <laughs> so I'm Amber Ziza. I'm the founder and CEO of the AAE Corporation, which is a conglomerate of family-owned businesses that really help focus on growing organizations from the people side and helping small businesses become big businesses. So we have so many different projects and, and contracts and things that we work on. We're a small but mighty team. And yeah, that's that's what I do day to day. That's what I eat, sleep, breathe, drink, dream. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, and I'm, I'm just curious, um, what should the folks expect in this conversation? Um, I know these are uncertain times. Um, mm -hmm. I know these are, are challenging times and it's not something to make light of. There's some folks who are struggling. I wonder we've been impacted. I know that folks on my team have found themselves in the hospital, um, family members. And so it, it's, it's challenging time. And so what should folks expect that want to be a speaker or want to share their message or, or want to extend their platform? What type of conversation will we be getting into on this episode? Uh, you know, I think that the biggest point I think everyone's going to take away from this conversation is the fact that there are still opportunities out there, even during these uncertain times, during health scares, there's still opportunity out there. So we're just going to talk about how do you find that opportunity when it comes to speaking? Mm, I love that. And, you know, we, you and I were talking prior to going on air about um, a number of our colleagues who are speakers and, and they travel or they're influencers and they do conferences and they put on conferences and a number of folks for the next six to eight months or some for the foreseeable future, there's been a shift, um, a big change. Um, what are you sharing with your clients when they're calling saying, oh my gosh, and I'm not saying they're panicking, but it's a reasonable question at a reasonable time. And they call and say, what now? <laughs> um, what, what message are you communicating to your clients? The biggest message my clients get from me right now is do not panic over what you don't know will happen. Only panic over things that you do know for sure. And even then, don't panic. Just make a plan. Um, and so that's been the biggest message I've tried to convey. So many people get so stressed out and worried about things that they think might happen, but they don't know for sure. And so they're sitting there in a ball of worry and analysis paralysis, unable to make a decision or unable to move because they're afraid of what they think is going to happen. When in reality, what they're thinking is probably much larger than what would actually will happen. So instead of panicking, make a plan for the things that you know will happen for sure. The things that you are certain of are the things that you want to focus on. Mm, okay. And, and, you know, just from a mindset perspective, I, I love what you're saying, by the way, um, for those folks that had to make the phone call, um, I was talking to a, a colleague, they had to lay someone off. Um, she'd worked for him for, for like six years and not lay him off, I should say. But he says, look, I was able to carry for two weeks, but I don't have 45 days that's in the bank that I could just say, hey, stay home, work from home. It's going to be OK. I had to kind of stop things. Um, and it's tough. I mean, I, I think he took it as, as hard as she was going to take it. Um, just from a mindset perspective, are those folks who got to call their mortgage company um, or they got to call creditors or people who loaned them loans and they can't do it? What are you sharing with them right now? What message are you sharing with those folks? The message I'm sharing is to look for all of the opportunities possible to give yourself some grace, but internally give yourself grace. I think that when we, as a society, we've been so used to that if you don't have the money to pay your employees and you have to lay them off, or you don't have the money to pay your mortgage, so you've got to call your bank, that that is somehow a failure on your part. When in reality, only 1% of the humans alive have ever dealt with a pandemic like this. Mm. And so everyone is in the same boat. I mean, you have major, major corporations who are saying we had to lay off all of our employees because we didn't even have a week to float them. 
Um, and so, you know, give yourself grace in that, but find opportunities where you can look for, you know, call your banks, be proactive. Um, the first thing I told all of my clients to do when we started seeing the issues pop up in China, because we have clients in China, was call your bank, call your mortgage company, call your car financing company, call your credit cards, call to see if you can get a line of credit for your business, but be proactive in it. Don't wait until that payment comes and you can't make it you know you're not going to be able to make it now. So call them now. Yes, you're going to have to be on hold forever because everyone's making those calls, but it's better to be proactive than to have to be reactive when they're sending notices once the, what I call the kumbaya phase is (laughs) over, which it will be over very soon. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're going to come. For those folks out there like Rick Dentley is out there, Troy Holder, what's going on, Troy? Tanya Fairley, it is always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining. Tanita, who's out there? Michael, who's out there? So many folks that are tuning in I know you're going to talk about step by step how they can build their business, how they can build their platform, how they can build their online platform. But take a moment. You've done so much in your career. You've got so much more to go. Um, Not what is your big why before we get out of this green room, but really what mission Mm -hmm. is Amber on these days? What's your purpose in life? You know, my purpose in life is to teach everyone how to beat the game, so to speak. The good old boy game is what I call it. Um, You know, there are a lot of mediocre men in Minnesota who have a lot more opportunities afforded to them that a lot of entrepreneurs of color do not. And so my mission in life for the last two years has been teaching the same things that my mentors taught me and really spreading those opportunities around and saying like, listen, if you go to this company instead of that company, you'll be able to get a better uh, interest rate on your loan. Or, oh, if you talk to this company and ask them if they want to be a subcontractor of you, if you get this certification, then you'll be able to get 60% of that profit. And so being able to have those conversations and teach you know, the next generation of entrepreneurs coming up. That's my mission. That's my goal in life. You know, that's that, that's one of the things I admire about you. I admire your mission. I admire your goal. And on this episode, we often talk about the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. But on this episode, you'll be talking about getting some results in your bank account. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to dig into how to get results in your bank account even now. Uh, even now, if that's the case, if you're out there right now, just look right below the video. We got to get started. What's going on? Dwayne Reynolds, my good friend. Hey, Tracy Washington. Thanks for joining. We got to get going, but someone do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. You have my permission. I'm sure Amber is okay with this. The message she's going to deliver can help not only you, but another entrepreneur. So hit the share button, hit the watch party button. When you do that, just right up in the top part, just put it's time to serve with your story. Hashtag Amber Azia. Did I get that right? Yes, Aziza. Azita, I got it right. Okay. Say it again. Aziza. Aziza. A-Z-I-Z-A. Aziza, sorry, Aziza. So let's put, it's time to serve with your story. Hashtag Amber Aziza. Put that in there right now. Put that right down right now. She's going to share the story. I got to get going, by the way. Kelvin, Carol, how you doing? We're going to get going in five. Raven Hunter, she said, hey, Amber. What about Hey Shea Brown? Let's get going in five, four, three, two, one. We're going to change some lives. I know it's going to happen. I can't wait. We'll be right back. It's showtime. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, Woo-hoo! everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shea Brown. My check, my check. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, man. I can never get enough. And every time I step man. up in the building, yes. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah. 
Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, you the entrepreneur, you the big dreamer, you the game changer, you the person out there that want to make a difference in the world to make sure you have all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I believe you have three visions. That's why Amber's here. I believe you have three visions. Vision number one, I believe you have, is you have a vision for yourself. You have a vision for type of food that you want to eat, organic, I hear you out there, for the clothes that you want to wear, for the vacations you want to go on, for the restaurants you want to eat, eat in with the, well, we can eat again one day. You want to go there. It takes resources, which means it takes revenue. Don't worry, Amber, going to talk about how you can do that, by the way. And then others of you, you have vision number two. I know I do. And that vision number two you have is a vision for your loved ones. I have two boys. They're now adult men. But there was a time I wanted to send them to a college of their choice. And that was a blessing. They were able to go to college. Some of you want to write a check for someone's mortgage right now. Some of you want to pay, pay for someone's health care right now. Some of you like me, you have mother there. My mother's still here. I'm blessed to be able to order stuff online. I can't go in the house. I can only knock at the door, leave the groceries out front. But guess what? I can buy the groceries. She can order stuff online and still have a good life. It takes resources. Don't worry. Amber's going to talk about revenue because you got to purchase those resources. And then the last vision you have in the time I have, you have a vision number three. You have a vision for the people you were called to serve. And I have to be a believer. You don't have to be a believer. But I always like to say that God gave Noah a vision. And he's in the Bible, by the way. Noah, he's there. And imagine if you're Noah and God's giving you all the experience. He's giving you all the expertise and you are ready to go. And you show up for your assignment. And someone says... Nor we're sorry to report, but there is no hammers in the house. What? No hammer? It's okay. <laughs> rule number one, don't panic. That's rule number one. Uh, excuse me, Nor, I have to let you know, please. Um, there are no nails either. No hammer, no nails. <laughs> we'll be just fine. Maybe that's you right now. Or, or last time, Nor, I'll last report to you. There are no people and there's no wood. No team. Good luck on this mission. And no, it's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And that might be you. You're stuck without a team. It takes revenue to purchase those resources. You're stuck without a message. It takes revenue to get someone to help you out. And Amber is here to help you do that today. So let's welcome Amber to the platform to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. What's up, Amber? Hey. <laughs> that is such a great intro, such a great ramp up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're here for a reason. And folks that are out there like Raven Hunter, thanks a lot for joining. By the way, Tanisha Simpson's out there, Jacqueline Taylor, Adam, so many folks that are out there. There, they've got a message they've got a story and they're like you want me to do that now right in all these crazy times talk about mm -hmm. now why now is the best time to step up and extend your business by using speaking listen if you look at every major organization every major profitable organization the majority of them actually came to be during times of crisis. They rose to the top during times of crisis. And that's because they were strategic about the moves that they made, the decisions that they made, um, the people that they associated with, the partnerships that they uh, brought to light during that time. So this is the best time for you to leverage your business, to grow your following, to grow your exposure during this crisis time. And speaking is the way to do that. Yeah, Amber, there's so many folks are saying, but Amber, and I know you help folks with their brand and their message. Mm -hmm. I got so many stories, Amber. I don't <laughs> kind of know how to bring my message together and, and how to really formulate. I can talk, though. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I can talk. But when it comes to being able to communicate clearly and effectively, it's a challenge. Um, to that person right now, talk about why, why having a brand and a brand message or a brand story it is really relevant because I know that's something that you do for your clients as well. Mm -hmm. So having a singular voice is what I call it. Um, and yes, you may have multiple stories and it's perfectly fine to share those multiple stories, but there has to be a thread of similarity throughout all of them. So if you're talking about that, you're trying to save the rainforest and teach people how to twerk and, you know, help clear up climate change that, 
that's too much. You're all over the place. You need to have a thread of similarity in order to bring those stories into one singular voice. Having that one singular voice will allow other companies and organizations that want to book you as a speaker to be able to identify you as a subject matter expert in your lane. Listen, they're not out there saying, let me give $10,000 to a jack of all trades. They're giving $10,000 to people who have a singular brand and a singular voice. And that's what you want to do. Singular brand, singular voice. Uh, Terrence Carter is out there watching. And again, so many folks. Carol, I see you. Elizabeth, thanks a lot. Melissa, we appreciate you sharing it. Um, the sharing this message forward. The person sitting there now saying, okay, but I got to do mine on, on stage. Like, you don't understand. Amber, you know, when they <laughs> see me and they hear me and I'm like in my flow and action, it all works out. Now you want me to kind of try to do the same thing online? Mm -hmm. Holla at me. Talk to me for a moment. So I'm about to hurt some feelings now. <laughs> If you cannot bring that same level of stage presence that you bring on stage to the online platform, then you're really not that dynamic of a speaker, right? So we're all looking at Shay. He's amazing. He's, he's engaging, he's igniting, but he's that way on stage as well. He can translate it. He can make it work. So if you can't do that, then that simply means you're really not that dynamic of a speaker. It means that you need a crowd to hype you up. Um, so practice, practice makes perfect. Just like you learned how to perfect your, your amazing speech and stage presence on stage, learn how to perfect it online because honey, that is where the big bucks are at right now. That is where all of these organizations who have sent their team remote when they're looking to bring in speakers, that's where they're looking is to bring in speakers on a virtual platform. You know, for, um, Marcia White, you're bringing out the all-stars, by the way. Marcia White's <laughs> out there. Kiana Brown's out there. Harold Jean uh, Lowe's Lewis is watching right now. You're just bringing out the all-stars. Take a moment and if you had to say, hey, Shay, here's step one, here's step two, and here's step three for what any speaker, and the speaker doesn't have to be like a, a, a National Speaker Association mm -hmm. person, and you don't have to be a, a Toastmasters, although that's cool. I was in Toastmasters. did a lot of stuff. Um, but I, I just want to get my message out, Amber. Um, what's like three steps that you could just share with me that I could walk away with doing this episode is going to help me in my business now. And I want you to notice before she does this, by the way, I want you to do Amber a favor. We believe in the giver's economy and the person that out gives the competition out earns the competition. Hit the share button. If you didn't hit the share button, even if this message is not for you, like, Shay, I never want to speak. I'm, I'm behind the scenes. There's someone else out there that has a book. There's someone else out there that's an author. There's someone else out there right now that's a coach. There's someone else out there right now that needs to really change their business. And Amber will change your life if you're let her. So she's about to give you at least three steps, which here's an all honesty. She didn't ask for a cash app payment. She didn't ask for a credit card. She's here to serve. So hit the share button and just put it's time to serve. And that's what Amber's doing right now. Let's put it's time to to serve we're going to pay this message forward we're going to make a bigger difference in the world and we're going to have more meaning for folks that need it most all right amber go ahead and share at least maybe three steps that folks can do so the first step you need to do is something that anyone who has gone through any of my speaking programs will tell you uh, right off the top of their head they'll say i know exactly what she's going to say first is you need to make your speech flexible if you're used to doing stage speeches for an hour hour and a half 45 minutes and that's kind of your sweet spot you need to learn to become way more flexible in your speech. Your speech should be able to be a 45 keynote, 45 minute keynote speech, a breakout session, which is typically an hour and 30 minutes, a half day workshop, a full day workshop, and a two day workshop. That's how flexible your speech needs to be. And then even some of my more advanced speakers, I tell them they need to be a three day workshop. Why? Because when you are looking to speak at events right now, most of the events that are not canceled, that are more virtual, and they're perfectly okay with paying you to present virtually, are corporations. And in those corporations, they want to know that there's flexibility. They want to know that if they need to fill three days worth of space for a conference, that you could do it. Or if they need to do a specific executive training uh, for compliance reasons to show that they did teach their executives diversity and engagement, then yes, you need to have that speech to be able to be flexible. So I'm going to say it again. It needs to be able to be a keynote speech, which is about 45 minutes. It needs to be able to be a breakout session, which is about an hour and a half. It needs to be able to be a half day session, a full day session, 
and a two day session. And if you think you're bad, go into that three day session. So that's really the first step you need to do is look at your speech, determine how can I make it flexible? How can I stretch that topic? And I'm telling you, if you can't make it into a two or three day topic, you don't know enough about your topic. So you need to dig deeper. So everyone write down step number one, put down step number one, put it right below the video. Just write step number one, make your talk flexible. Just put step number one, make your talk flexible. Do that right now. All right, Amber, give us, give us step number two, step number two. Now I'm going to tell you, you might say, Shay, this is overly simplistic, but I'm going to tell you, if you follow what Amber's saying, I promise you it's the first step to moving towards where you want to be. And some of you right now, you're thinking to yourself, I just had more opportunities. I changed more lives and I'd make more money. Well, Amber's laying out the case right now. <laughs> so the second step is you need to focus on industries that are thriving right now. Um, conferences are not thriving. Stop reaching out to conferences saying, hey, when you come back online and when you're back ready to go, let's go ahead and book me. Like, do you know how many emails they're getting like that right now? Stop it. Stop with that's the good. nonsense. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so reach out to, to industries that are thriving. They're all looking to bring in speakers. Let me tell you, most organizations that are multi-million dollar organizations have a specific budget set aside just to bring in experts and speakers to teach, to train, to speak, to motivate their teams and their executives. So reach out to companies in the cannabis industry, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, the financial industry, healthcare, specifically healthcare support right now. So like auditing, insurance companies, they're all thriving right now. Uh, tech companies are still thriving. Um, professional associations are still doing their thing and they're still thriving because they already have the dues for the year. So they're good. So those are the industries that you want to look at. You want to see what industries are doing really well. Those are the industries you want to see. Can I make some sort of change in my speech, some sort of pivot in my speech that will allow me to present to them? Me, I tend to speak on millennial engagement or building a multi-million dollar business. And I can take that speech and twist it, flip it, <laughs> rub it down to any industry that applies. I've spoken to accountants. I've spoken to executives of cannabis industries. I have gone and spoken to pharmaceutical industry, and I've been able to take it and speak to a group of farmers. So for you, you should be able to make your speech pivot. So the first step is make it flexible. But the second step is make it pivot and focus on industries that are thriving right now. Make it pivot, focus on industries that are thriving. Someone put down step number two, step number two. Make it pivot and focus on industries that are thriving. Very important. And she lists out a couple of industries. And I, I know some of you are thinking, okay, it's perfect for her. She's, she's never had any problems. This is what she does. <laughs> Amber, take a moment if you will. I know she's got number three. She's got number three and she's got a big giveaway. You guys, you want to, you don't want to miss it. Like Amber came, she came, this is what she does. She came loaded. But for some of you, you're meeting her for the very first time. What's up, Johnny Davis and Felicia. And you're probably wondering like who in the LL Cool J is this person that we're talking to right now? Reasonable question. So I'm going to ask her if she'll just take a minute and tell you a little bit about maybe a challenge that she had in her business and how she was able to apply these principles and bounce and bounce back to where she is. And maybe there's never been any challenges, but the Amber you see today is not someone that read something on some YouTube or read mm -hmm. something online and watched some YouTube video or just came back from a boot camp. She's someone that's out there doing this. And I've had the pleasure of watching the journey, not for one year, not for two years, but over eight plus years now. So take a take a moment to share just just once, Nora. So they have a little snippet of who is Amber. You know, so <laughs> there is this thought of that Amber has never had any issues, Amber has never had any problems, but the reality is, is that I started speaking all the way back in high school. Um, I've been a professional speaker since I've been 18 years old, literally like on stages, but I wasn't getting paid to do that. I want to make it clear. I didn't know that being paid to speak was a thing until I went to enough conferences and realized that I'm standing on the same stages as these amazing dynamic speakers who all they seem to do for a living is speak. And so for me, I needed to figure out how do I get paid to speak since I'm, I'm struggling with that element. When I built my first business, I had nothing. I left in a position that I was an executive and I was making six figures a year, but 
disposable income <laughs> meant that I was very disposing of it. Uh, so saving was not my forte. So when I left my job, I didn't have very much money left over after I paid my bills for that month. And I had to hurry up and figure out how am I going to fund building a business? Because I knew that that was my calling. I knew that that was my purpose. So for me, I had to use speaking as a way and a method to get cash for my business. And so I started off with smaller engagements that paid less because I wanted to work my way through the system to see how the system worked. Mm, to see how the system worked. I love it, Amber. I love it. Amber's kind of laying out the case um, for how you can thrive and how you can speak in these very not uncertain times, but there are certainly challenging times right now. We would all agree, mm -hmm. but there's one gift that we have out, out of all this. And Amber and I was talking in the green room and yeah, um, I know I've been impacted. Family members have been impacted. Um, people right on my team, very personal to me have been impacted. So it's very seriously, very serious conversation. But the one gift that I believe God has given us all, whether you believe in God or I happen to be a believer, but or, or the universe or a higher power or a higher being or whatever it is that you believe in, um, he's given us the gift of time. And you can take this time right now, these 1,440 minutes you have every single day to actually take the steps that you've always wanted to do. And you're safe, not stuck, but you're safe in your home right now where you can do that. And through the power of these fiber optic lines, Amber is laying it out exactly what you can need to do in a very short brief point of time. So she gave step number one. She gave step number two. I'm going to ask in a minute to give step number three. But before I do it, I'm going to ask Amber, Amber, what type of folks do, do you typically support? What type of folks do you typically help on this journey? So someone's out there listening. You might be thinking, I got to connect with Amber. Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to ask her to do something for you. Very special. But, but just Amber, what type of clients do you typically work with before you get step number three? I typically work with men and women of color who are looking for the blueprint to having the same success that big speakers and big entrepreneurs have had. Um, so I work with those who may feel like they're the underdog or may feel like, you know what, I have the exposure, but I'm not getting paid to do what I want to do. Those, you are my people. Hello. You've met, <laughs> you've met someone that, that speaks your language. <laughs> I love how you say that. You're so funny. Uh, Y'all my peeps. I love it. You're All my right. peeps. <laughs> give us step number three, Amber. Give us step number three. I remember when I first met her, she was, that was back when Periscope was really hot. She was just like, you were all oh, over the place when someone don't speak. She was like everywhere and still is. And she's built a business, by the way. So congratulations to you, Amber. You're a rock star. <laughs> certainly someone I certainly admire and look up to. Thanks. Okay. So in terms of step number three mm -hmm. is to expand your video footprint. This mm -hmm. is how you will get booked easier expand your video footprint. When someone Googles your name and they click on that videos tab, they should have pages and pages of videos and examples of you speaking. And I don't want you to stress if you've never spoken on a stage before, because that's not going to work to your disadvantage. In fact, it's probably going to work to your advantage in this times right now, simply because they're looking for virtual speakers. So if you can show that you know how to speak on a virtual platform, aka live streams, Zoom meetings, if you can display that, then that's going to put you heads and shoulders above everyone else. Because like I said before, a lot of great stage speakers do not present well in the virtual realm. So if you're really strong in the virtual realm, you know that you can rock it and keep an audience engaged when you are speaking on a live stream, then that should be what you should be putting up on YouTube so it's searchable. So make everything that you have video-wise, make it searchable. They should be able to find you and have a large video footprint to go off of to determine if they want to book you and pay you to speak. Mm, I love it. Book you to pay you to speak. You are rocking out. You are laying out the case for those folks out there. We're talking to Amber. She's talking about how you can what speak and grow your business in these uncertain times. And she's laying out the one, twos and threes. You got Pat Gilliam. She's watching right now with Sisters Extravaganza out there in Phoenix, Arizona that's tuned in right now. Ada's out there. Dennis is out there. Teresa Martin's out there. And so many folks are tuned in. Let me let me ask a question if I can before we do a big giveaway here. We're going to share something that's going to help everyone. 
Um, take a moment, if you would. We have a core value, Amber. And our core value here is called Today is My January 1st. And today is my January 1st. For those know who know who this is, you know what segment we're in, you can go and look right below the video and you can make that declaration that today is my January 1st. It starts today. For those that are hearing it for the first time, I get it. Today is my January 1st represents one of those moments, and there's probably a thousand plus moments throughout the day, where you can make a decision and that decision forever changes the trajectory of your life, right? You either work out while you're home or you sit back and you watch Netflix. You know how that goes. Um, you either eat hamburgers and french fries or you go to the refrigerator. You open it up and there's some broccoli. I'll have some of that, by the way. There's some kale. Ooh, that sounds so good. I'll have some, I'll have some Brussels sprouts. But I'll have those anyway. And, and you make the right decisions. Um, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st. Amber, what does it mean to you? What do you hear? To me, I hear restart, reset, and, and giving yourself grace. Grace has been my favorite word throughout this entire time of uh, just craziness and crisis. Um, saying today is my January 1st is like, this is the day that I'm going to hit reset. This is the day that I'm going to forgive my past undoings and focus on the things that I can do uh, to make my life great. So I love that. Today's my January 1st. I'm going to start saying that all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Today's my January 1st. Those folks might be wondering, what was your January 1st moment, Amber? That moment you decided you were going to plant your flag, you were going to draw a line in the sand, and you were going to make it as an entrepreneur. Like, yeah, I know you had many moments that we all have throughout yeah. our journey, but just pick <laughs> one of those moments that kind of led you to say, this is my calling. This is what I'm going to do. I think my biggest moment um, was I was working in a corporation, thousands of employees. I was an executive getting paid six figures a year, happily working six, seven days a week. And our owner of the company, his private health company, brought us all together and said, you know, hey guys, we made our goals thanks to Amber because I had gotten a lot of pushback. I was the only brown person at the executive table. I was the youngest by about 30 years and I was certainly the only woman. So I got a lot of pushback and because of the changes I made in the company, they were like, we're, we're going to be able to give out bonuses this year for the first time in a while. And so the owner of my company, as we're packing things up, he says, Amber, you know, you've done such a great job. What are you going to use your bonus money to buy? And I said, I think I'm going to get a Tesla. Like, I'm going to use that to just pay off the majority of a Tesla. That's what I'm doing. And I say to him jokingly, well, what are you going to buy? Because he's the owner of the company. So surely he's not getting a bonus, right? You get profit. And he said, well, we just bought an island. And uh, I'm thinking... You know, we need to get a boat to get to the island, like a new boat. You don't want an old boat. And so I'm sitting here thinking he's joking until he pulls out his phone and starts showing me pictures of the boats and the island. And I just had this epiphany of, I work seven days a week, every day, every week I am here. And you are here one day a month. And you're not even here the whole day. You don't have to work whole eight hours. And at that moment, I really realized, you know, there were several other things that really factored into that as well. But at that moment, I said, you know what? I quit because that was the moment that I realized I will never be able to make that kind of money and being able to make my worth and, and, and without being it based on what someone else thinks that I'm worth. And it was just so frustrating for me. And I just quit in the moment. I don't recommend that. Wait till you get your bonus. <laughs> don't quit before you get the bonus. Because that makes things 20 times harder for me, okay? <laughs> 20 times harder, y'all. Don't quit before you get the bonus. But for me, that was my moment. Because, you know, there were several other things that had, you know, built to that moment. But that moment was the moment where I said January 1st. Like, this, that was my January 1st for sure. I love your energy. I love your honesty. She I love Amber. Amber didn't say, Shay, you have to ask any questions. She said, Shay, let's just have a conversation. Let's just let's just talk to the people. And that's that's what she's doing right now. So she has such a heart to give and such a heart to serve. Uh, let me ask you a question. I know we're under this today is my January 1st. And folks are writing today is my January 1st. And they're believing that. And they're excited, just like they were back on December 31st, by the way, after a couple of drinks on the back of a napkin. They were writing down these New Year's resolutions. This was their year. This was my time. And I don't know if you noticed, Amber, but January 17th is National 
Ditch Your Resolution Day. Like, you can go Google that. National Ditch Your Resolution Day is January 17th. So some folks fell off track. Here's a very important question. And before I ask her this question, I'm going to ask her how does she coach folks to be consistent. You hit the share button. If you haven't hit the share button yet, you can participate. Let's give Amber a digital applause. And the way you give her a digital applause, you hit the share button, you hit the watch party button, and you can write these words. You are consistent because you are consistent. I'm going to ask Amber right now, what does she tell folks to be consistent? Because we've all heard that consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. But having said that, well, what do we struggle with? Myself included. Consistency. <laughs> Amber, talk about being consistent. You know, the biggest thing that I think anyone can do is to have accountability, but the right accountability, mm -hmm. because sometimes we will, we will, we will be our own worst enemies. We will align ourselves with people who we think are, oh, they're going to be our accountability. Like, hey, new year, new us. We're going to lose weight this year. But they know that person has just as less resolve as they do to <laughs> actually follow through. So find yourself someone who's actually done what you're trying to do and have them hold you accountable because they're not going to take any of your excuses because all of the obstacles and things that you're running into are the same things that they ran into and overcame. So find yourself someone who can truly keep you accountable because they know the road because they've already been down it. Mm, hold you accountable. Talk about the power of affirmations and why it's important that we have a belief system, that we have an affirmation, that we have something that we tell ourselves to keep us on track or keep us consistent. I'm not saying just keep us motivated, but really keep us going. I know there's a lot of quotes and I know there's a lot of affirmations. So you'll pick one of your favorites. And for those folks that are watching right now, if you want to participate and you want to love on someone else, you want to bless someone else, you want to do more good for humanity, you can take a moment if you want. And you can look right below the video and you can go ahead and write your favorite affirmation, your favorite belief statement. And you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for someone else. And that's why this show exists, to give everyone the resources to all come together. I love Amber. When we talked to her, Amber didn't come from a place of scarcity and say, well, I tell you what, let me just hold my people, hold what I got over here. She says, no, no, Shay, there's, there's, there's abundance out there. And she has a gift. I can't wait. You don't want to miss it. She's doing something special. You don't want to miss it. I'll let her frame the conversation in a minute. But right now, talk about the power of affirmations. And your favorite so one. You got to give us your favorite oh. one. Oh, I got to give the favorite oh, one. Give us too. one of them anyway. Give us one of them. Come on now. <laughs> so, you know, affirmations for me are very powerful. So much so that, you know, I have a whole 5 a.m. morning challenge that I'm doing right now. We spent a whole session talking about how to build proper affirmations and visualizations. Um, so for me, affirmations are important. I say them daily. I think my favorite affirmation, um, and then I'll tell you why it's so important, is that whatever your mind believes about yourself, whatever you allow your mind to believe about yourself will immediately become the truth. Whatever you allow your mind to believe about yourself will immediately become the truth. If you believe that you are able to do amazing things and accomplish great feats, then it's true. But if you believe that you can, if your mind is telling no, you can't do that, then okay, you can't either. And so for me, having affirmations reminds you of why you're doing this, right? It reminds you of why you're in the game. It reminds you of what you're trying to accomplish. It keeps your eye on the target so that you're not necessarily venturing off the path because you've lost your way. If you give yourself affirmations every single day, that is going to allow you to constantly and consistently remember that, hey, this is what I'm doing it for. And this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then it doesn't allow any outside measures, anyone posting on social media, anyone in your family telling you can't do it. It allows all of those outside elements to be shut down because your affirmations are guiding you in your way. Mm, affirmation is valuable. Speaking of affirmations, for those folks out there, Deborah Gardner, who's a rock star, I got to connect you with her out in Phoenix, Arizona, is watching. And Dr. Kinnett Thigpen down in Raleigh, North Carolina is watching. Y'all got to connect with Amber. She's amazing. All of you are amazing out there, by the way. Teresa's amazing. Pony's amazing. So many out there writing your affirmation. Harold says, I like that affirmation, by the way. Tanisha Smith said, very powerful. Sunshine said, I'm loving it. Here's what I like to do because I'm, I've asked. Amber, if she would do something special. And before we do that, for those folks that are out there, one of the things we're doing, Amber, I think I may have mentioned it to you, is that mm -hmm. we have something called the Happy Entrepreneur Manifesto. And it's our big give back because a number of folks were asking for, what are your core values? What are your core beliefs? What are things that have held you in good times? And we've had some very dark times. 
some times that we're not proud of, but it's held us in those times as well. And now we're giving away the manifesto. There's no cost, there's no charge, but I'm on a mission to share this with 10 million entrepreneurs. That means I can't do it by myself, right? I need everyone to share it, everyone to pay the message for it, but it's just our manifesto. And a manifesto is like your belief statements. It's things that, that you believe in that mean something to you. One of my favorite up there, Amber, is someone said, I believe that spending quality time with my family is non-negotiable. Had a conversation with a woman about two weeks ago and during this uh, pandemic when she got home, she spent so much time in her office away from her family because she's working from home, starting her business. She said, you know what? When I read that, Shay, I just popped up in my email box. I said, you know what? I gotta get back to doing that. It had nothing to do with me. She was already doing that, but it was a reminder. I like, I believe automation is the key to reclaiming my time because I believe there is a 25th hour. And that 25th hour is automation. There are more than 1,440 minutes in every day when you automate what you're doing. But my favorite, and I'm going to ask Amber to talk about this, and I'm going to share with y'all how y'all can get this affirmation. There's no cost. There's no charge. There's no upsell, downsell, cross-sell. It's just our gift to the world is, and this is our core value, the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. So I'm going to ask Amber, because one thing she's talked about this is, yeah, you can get ching ching in your bank account, but why you got to have results in your life first? Why you got to take care of yourself first? Why that's so important is I like, get ready to, to have her do that. For those folks who just want to get a copy, like Shay, it sounds good. I just want to get the, my own manifesto. I want to stay connected with you. I want to stay in this conversation with you. There's no charge. I like that. You can get your cell phone number out now. It's very easy. Just get your cell phone number out. Go to the message side, just like you're sending a text message. In the text message area, for those listening to the podcast, don't call me. I'm going to go slow, please. And if you listen to Amazon, if you're on uh, Amazon Fire TV or Apple TV, you can do it as well. Type in manifesto. Just type in manifesto in the message side. And then in the number side, put 202-999-3515. So you're going to text manifesto to 202 999 three five one five once you do that and you text the word manifesto you'll get an instant message that takes you right to the link you can download it and then i want you to pay that forward with the world amber take a moment to talk about why the results in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account oh my goodness it's the same reason why they tell you on a plane to put your own oxygen mask on before you try to help someone else um, you have to be able to, as an entrepreneur, as a business person, you have to be able to have a life that's worth living. You have to have a life that's worth you doing all this work for. Because if you are building your business around uh, your life, then you're doing it right. Meaning that you're not building your life around your business. Having results in your life can mean anything from having well-rounded children, to having healthy relationships and friendships. It can mean that you pour into other people regularly. Those kind of things will automatically start to reflect in your bank account because as you give, as Shay said, as you give, you will start to receive and people will start to pour back into you. So I am a huge believer that you know your life will reflect how what you do in your life and how you live your life will reflect in your bank account. I love it. So important. Now, now one of the things, Amber, we were we were in the green room and you and I were having a conversation and you mentioned that, you know, I'm going to not only pay the message for it, but when this conversation is over, because at some point it will be shortly, it will be over. You want to make sure that people can walk away with something that can help them on this journey of life. And in this journey to be a speaker. So the conversation about to have is for those folks that want to speak for their business, those folks that have a message, they're an author, a speaker, influencer. You've got a story inside you. Um, you've got experience. You've got expertise. You're like, just give it to me, Shay. Just, I just need something I can get my hands on. This is so good. Well, Amber came to help you out with that. So I'm going to let her step back and kind of frame the conversation and then share with you step by step how you can be a great speaker and she'll give this hey i think that's it be a great speaker she's going to talk about that <laughs> so go ahead amber take a moment to frame the conversation and then uh, share with them the special gift that you have for them that they can all do at, at no cost 
Absolutely. So there are so many different paths to becoming a paid speaker, but the easiest path is to get help from people who've done it before. Um, And if you are sitting out there thinking, I really do want to grow my platform right now. I really do want to, you know, use this time to really become a better developed speaker, fine tune my speech, understand how to market it, understand how to price it, uh, then I recommend that you check out my free masterclass, totally free. It's called the five step system to becoming a paid speaker. Um, We cover so much in that training. It's about 90 minutes. So you want to watch it when you got some time, but it definitely goes into a deep dive of mistakes people make, um, my five step framework that creates a super profitable speaking career and how to take your speaking career to the next level. Wow. What's the, um, where do they go? You can't just leave us hanging. You you can't just leave us hanging. What are you going to do? Tell us you got (laughs) something and just leave us out there. Come on. We're all like on edges right now. (laughs) So you can go to wemakegreatspeakers.com and sign up for the class. It's oh, hold, 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 hold. You got You got to say a little slower. Everyone, Absolutely. here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up a browser and we're going to make sure that this website yeah. works. Amber, nothing personal. Sometimes sites don't work. Okay. So Listen, Amber's going to say it <laughs> nice and slow. And then we all, let's go make sure the site works. So let's all open up a browser right now. We can do this. And when she gives a site, someone put the site right below in the video. Like, Right below the comments, put go to, and she's going to give us the site. We're going to check it out. All right, Amber, we got a minute. So where do we go? So it's we make great speakers. Wait, 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 wait. We make we great make speakers. Speakers yep. with an S or speaker? Speakers with an S. All right. So someone do me a favor. Look right below the video and put down we make great speakers. Dot com. You can, you can, matter of fact, you can, you can hit the share button. You can take that link and you can, can they put it in their private group, Amber? Can they share Absolutely. it on their page? Okay. So share they don't have to watch the show. They, she said, you can share this message with anyone. Okay. So can you guys see if it works and y'all check that out? Okay. So I'm, I'm getting the note here and well, that's not it. I'm getting the note. There we go. All right. So the site is up. We verified it. Five step system to becoming a paid speaker. Oh, that's cool. Three biggest mistakes. Hey, three. Can you give us one? Do we do we have to come to the seminar? Can you give us at least one big mistake? Now, you you watching, you go to www.wemakegreatspeakers. Someone write that for me, please. Dot com. Thanks a lot, Raven, putting that down. Teresa, thanks so much for putting that down for us. And then give us one of the biggest mistakes. The speakers make so one of the biggest mistakes is speaking for exposure instead of real money Mm. um oftentimes people get really caught in the i'm speaking you know because they've got a great platform but if you don't know that you're really going to get an roi from that platform is is their audience the same as yours are their audience going to buy what you're selling at the end are you even allowed to sell at the end um then you're really setting yourself up for failure so Try not to speak for exposure unless it's absolutely going to benefit you. Oh, I love it, Amber. I love it. Go over to www. What's the address again, Amber? We make great speakers. dot com. Ah, go over there right now. Register. You can register right now, and then you go to the master class. Take really good notes, by the way, because Amber. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, before we go into the, the final, your final thoughts, if you would. Um, we do a segment called Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire for those folks that are watching for the first time. As we ask any questions that's on our mind and Amber can answer or she can decline. See, she has the opportunity to do that. And that's so cool. But the, the first question I'm curious, and it might be curious for folks that are watching, is um, of all the mentors you've had on this journey of life, and you've had so many, I'm sure, what's one yeah. lesson that you've learned from the mentors that you could share with us? Just any one lesson that can help us on our entrepreneur journey. You don't know everything, so stop acting like you do. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that that probably is the best lesson that I was given by multiple mentors. All of my mentors say that because oftentimes, especially we millennials, our egos kick in. And as someone's trying to tell us something, we're like, oh, yeah, 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 no, I know that part. And it's like, you know, you just want to get to the good part, to the juicy part. But what you're not realizing is that the building blocks that they're trying to give you as you're building your business and as you're building your speaker platform are the building blocks that you need and you probably set them up wrong to begin with. So stop trying to rush through because you think you know it already and instead take in what they're saying and see, okay, 
how can I do it differently than I did it before? Mm, I love it. What does success look like for Amber these days? Success is happiness. I mean, true, pure, unadulterated happiness. Um, for me, I'm blessed enough to be beyond the point that what's in my bank account is what ha- it makes me happy. And I've moved into that area of what's in my life makes me happy. You know, um, so for me, success is not having to stress about, you know, the money element and being able to really focus on just genuine happiness. Mm, okay. Um, why does Amber still do this? I mean, you could be doing a whole lot of things with your time, but even now, why are you showing up now? Um, we appreciate you being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show, but why'd you decide to be on the show and why'd you decide to share your message with the world? And again, you didn't ask for a cash out payment, but you came to serve. Why do you still do this? I do it because I love it. I mean, it is, my CFO jokes that it's my philanthropy. I love it. I genuinely do. Um, I feel like when I was coming up, there were a handful of black entrepreneurs that I could look to that were, you know, public and visible. Um, and so for me, I want to be, you know, the, the, the Shea Brown, the George Frazier, the Trevor Ott of the next generation of entrepreneurs that, you know, need an example of, of how to do it and how to overcome things. I mean, I'm talking about a person who started in foster care and, you know, now I've been able to build this conglomerate of businesses and have my family help me with it and my friends build it with me and you know for me I still do it because I want others to know that they can do it too mm, yeah I love it that's that's, that's pretty good I, I like that I like that that's, that's pretty good um what does Amber do for fun when she's not saving the world you know you're not out here <laughs> saving the world sharing your message dealing with brands and marketing and automation and my funnels click funnels some funnels and all this other stuff what does Amber do for fun well, when I'm allowed out of the house, I like to typically go and travel, have a happy hour with friends. Um, I'm, I'm big on travel. Y'all know I'm big on travel. If you follow me on IG, you know that traveling is my thing. And I'm in a lot of pain because I can't travel right now. Um, <laughs> but I, I love spending time with my family. Like, I will literally just pop up on them in Ohio. Like, hey, guys, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, they've asked me to stop doing that and give them more notice so they can play <laughs> in my head. But for me, fun is, you know just hanging out and relaxing, shutting down the computer, taking a trip without the computer. Um, that's, that's fun for me, but indoors, I would say, you know, for me, fun is cooking. I love to cook. So I've really been able to spend a lot of time focused on that. Wow. Well, I, well, I tell you what, you, you definitely have changed some lives. You help some folks that are out there watching right now. You're making a difference and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, let me first say thank you. We'll let you have your closing comments, your closing remarks to empower, to inspire folks that are out there right now. But first, let me say thank you. For those folks that are watching, we can give Amber a digital <laughs> applause. Now, how do you give a digital <laughs> applause? You can look right below the video and you can just put thank you, Amber. You can look right below the video. and You can put we appreciate you, Amber. And when you do that, that's your digital applause that we appreciate you. Or you can say, great job, Amber. Because Amber, we know one thing, and I believe she believes it, all of you can make more money. There's not a doubt in my mind that Amber can make more money and you can make more money. But here's something that Amber can't do. Here's something Shay can't do. None of us, not even you, can make more time. So you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So she's given us the most precious resource she has, which is her time. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Again, you have a heart to give, as I like to say for you. You have a heart to serve. You always have. I've been admire. I've stalked you on IG. I've watched you have fun. And <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to be here doing this time for you to share your message with the world. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to turn it over to you to have your closing thoughts, your closing comments for those folks. They got to go out there now. Now they got to walk the walk. They got to talk the talk. So what are your final thoughts? Again, thank you so much. We appreciate you. You rock. Thank you. So my final thoughts, guys, is this. There is nothing in the world that you cannot do if you really put in the work. And don't let anything in your background, anything in your history, past mistakes you've made, past poor encounters and decisions that you may have made, stop you from believing that you aren't good enough or you aren't sufficient enough to be and do the things that you want to do. If you want to have a multi-million dollar business, 
you can do it. You've just got to put the work in. If you want to have a speaking platform that's paying you out six figures a year, you can do that. Stop letting people make you think that because the color of your skin or because of the size of your hips or because you're a woman or a man or because you come from the hood or because you come from the verbs, it doesn't matter what your background is. What matters is is that you put in the work. And yes, your work might have to be a little bit more than somebody else's work because they have more advantages and choices to them. But listen, don't let that stop you because if I can make it, and I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'd like to tell people I'm nobody special. I just put in the work. If I can make it, then you can too. If I can make it, you can too. With that being said, you have all been watching the one and only Amber and boy, is she a rock star. With that being said, I wanted to know that, that you're amazing already, that you're, you are incredible. Every single one of you, you have so much greatness deep, deep inside of you. Make sure you stay connected. You can hit the like button and follow us on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Pay this message forward. Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button and say, this was some good stuff with Amber. You can do that. Amber's message can be shared with the world. So with that being said, for those folks that are tuning in and wonder who I am, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life is short. Live in the moment and make it count. With that being said, God bless. Thanks a lot, Amber. You rock. Peace. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank every one of you for tuning in. God bless. See you later. Until next time. So much fun. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, Woo-hoo! everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shea Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we ain't no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.